Hey, welcome to the 40 Finance Channel, everybody. My name's Jeff Beers. Today, I'm going to go down a list of stocks under $10 that I think are at least worth putting on your watch list and potentially buying as long-term holds. Normally, when you talk about cheap stocks under $10, uh, you're probably playing like a momentum or a short-term game. But for these stocks, I dug in a little bit deeper on a longer-term analysis, and they all seem to be legitimate businesses with opportunities to grow over the long term. Now, full disclosure, I don't own any of these names, although there's a few that I'm actually considering, uh, maybe starting like a penny stock portfolio or small cap stock portfolio just for fun off to the side. So this is more of an analysis exercise to see like, hey, can we find anything uh, that would actually grow in the long term at the bottom of the haystack. That's kind of what this list is that I have for you today. Reminder as always that my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. Please make sure you do your own research before investing. And of course, if you like stock market analysis like this, then please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. Thank you to everybody for all your support. All right, first stock on the board here is IntelliCheck. Ticker symbol IDN. This one comes in today at 822, and it's up 5% today. The market's actually bounced back a little bit. Uh, we had a slow day yesterday. So some of these stocks, uh, you know, this $8.22, if you get lucky and look for market dips, you might get it even cheaper. All right, quick synopsis here, the IntelliCheck Identity Validation Platform. This is what this stock is all about, verifying identity. You can see they have identity card verification, facial biometrics used online. So obviously this day and age in security and a lot of stuff going on online, uh, services like this I think will uh, definitely grow in terms of demand and IntelliCheck is already in a lot of the right spots. All right, you see here on the one-year chart for IntelliCheck, uh, you did have a high of 1441 back in February. You're down to about 822, and that is about the same price you would have paid in October of last year. So it has come down a little bit. We have an EPS of three cents, P ratio of 200, but most importantly, we want to take a look at what the future holds for this company, right? Uh, because these are, we're trying to pitch long-term holds on some of these cheap stocks. So let's see what we got. Uh, last year's EPS, three cents. This year, 17 cents projected. It does have three analysts, so that's good. Some of these small cap names, we're gonna struggle to find analyst opinion. Uh, so it's good that we have at least three here two of which have projected to next year at uh, 41 cents. So they're definitely heading in the right direction. You look at revenue estimates, uh, last year 10 million, this year 15 million, next year potentially 22 million. So that's plus 40% growth uh, each of the next two years if they do hit on that. All right, taking a look at some of the financial highlights here. Uh, you do have revenue last year of 10 million. You have total cash of 13 million. You have total debt of 32K. So the balance sheet is in decent shape, uh, if not good. Profit margin's a little low at 5%. So all the more reason they do need to push sales uh, as quickly as possible but there's definitely something here. All right, flipping over to the tip ranks dashboard to see what the uh, best performing analysts think. With all of these small cap stocks we're doing today, I am gonna include all analyst ratings. So normally I do best performing, that's sort of my default setting, but we need to open it up to all the analysts because frankly, these are tiny stocks and they just don't have a lot of coverage. If you're interested in learning more about tip ranks and potentially supporting the channel, my affiliate link is in the description. We scroll down, we're looking for fresh updates and we actually have a couple uh, on this stock one month ago and two days ago. And uh, both of these analysts come in with five-star ratings. They've got buy signals, one at 1150, 
and one at $18. All right, next stock on the board is Aqua Bounty Technologies, ticker symbol AQB. And Aqua Bounty is basically a land-based fish farm operation that uh, solves some of the overfishing and ocean problems that we are starting to have in the environment. Uh, you can kind of see the green tubs off to here. But what they do is they grow their salmon and fish farms instead of actually fishing for it. And I think some of the things that are interesting to me about this company is the uh, contaminants and antibiotics that it can keep out of fish by uh, farming them and the opportunity to offer restaurants an alternative to uh, fresh salmon. I don't know, there's something here that's pretty interesting. Going back to the stock page, uh, this one was right about $4 or so. Uh, heading into Thanksgiving, you saw a little jump up to $12, and then it's kind of floated back down here recently uh, to $5.40. P ratio is negative right now, and on the analyst front, yes, we do have a couple uh, analysts who cover this one. Two for the current year, so last year minus 45 cents. This year they cut that in half and get closer to minus 20 cents. And then only one analyst projection for next year, but it comes in lower as well at minus six cents. So you're getting closer to par, if you will. But take a look at these revenue projections. Year ago sales, 128K. Uh, this year, five and a half million. Next year, 10 million. So I'm not sure if this 128. Uh, was impacted by COVID, and I'm guessing the restaurant chains, uh, the demand for salmon went down. I don't know. That's a pretty low number. Uh, then you jump up here, and then you jump up there. Definitely would want to cover your base on why is that going on before you jump in, but there's certainly exciting statistics, at least from this view. All right, on the finance side, revenue last year, 128 k You've got $95 million in cash. 10 million in debt. So the 10 million in debt would normally be an issue with this low of revenue, but at the projection anyway, would be that they hit $5 million in revenue. And then all of a sudden this balance is out a little bit better. You're definitely going to have to watch it because we don't have like profit margin information, stuff like that. Again, dig in more, but there is some excitement around this company. I was trying to see, is this an IPO? No, it was, uh, it's been around and publicly listed at least back to 2017. Uh, so Aqua Bounty Technologies could be a stock to add to your watch list. All right, over on the tip rank side, uh, not a whole lot of action here. One month ago, you did get someone come in, Ben Clive put a buy on it at $15, which is over 100% upside. Uh, at the same time though, uh, this analyst came back and downgraded it. Uh, so, you know, mixed bag of earnings. I think you're definitely gonna have to dig in and read some management comments on this one. Uh, but I like the theory of the company, at least, knowing that restaurants uh, are gonna get back in gear here uh, certainly by the end of the year. All right, next stock on the board, Aspen Group, ASPU. And Aspen Group is the company behind Aspen Online University. I believe they also have another online university called like United States University or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but what I like here is this is obviously for-profit education. But what they're doing is offering folks, you know, an affordable way to get into continuing education and potentially further their career. And what I think, at least my opinion here in 2021, I think the additional stimulus and potentially some of the opportunities that might come from financial aid or student loans uh, post COVID, I think will open up some new opportunities for online education providers uh, that will boost enrollment. We may not see that until fall, but I like what Aspen has going for them in terms of being in a market 
where I can see demand increasing. All right, Aspen Group stock price today at $4.90. We look at the one-year chart. This was a $7 stock back uh, last April, peaked as high as 13. Now you're sliding down to $4.90. It'll be interesting to try to find out why this one keeps dipping as far as it has. Uh, EPS, negative 38 cents. Let's see what the analysis brings. Does this company have a future? Uh, we've got good coverage, six analysts and five analysts. And last year, you're minus 29 cents. This year, they're putting a dent in that, getting down to minus 18 cents and potentially profitability next year at 0.04 cents a share. Looking down at revenue, and this looks pretty good. Last year, you're at 49 million. Projected this year at 67 million, next year to 86 million. So that's growth 37% and 28% over the next couple years. All right, on the finance side, this could be part of our problem with the declining stock because the profit margin isn't showing as positive. That could just be a temporary thing, but it's something to look at. Uh, revenue last year, 63 million, or excuse me, trailing 12 months, 63 million. They've got 10 million in cash, 12 million in debt. That's pretty manageable if you're bringing in this kind of money. All right, on the tip rank side, we've got a handful of folks who have come in in the last month. You've got all buy ratings, 15, 12, 14, 14. A lot of upside there. So this is definitely an intriguing opportunity as far as uh, making some money, uh, potentially quick money even, with this trading at under $5. I would just caution you to read into, uh, let's go back here for a second. Make sure you get an explanation for yourself on this downfall here, because that's the only thing I'm worried about is why we're slipping off so much. Uh, so definitely read into that. Otherwise, there could be uh, some good gains to have with Aspen Group. All right, next stock coming in is AutoWeb, ticker symbol AUTO, ticker price of 256. And AutoWeb is basically uh, digital marketing for uh, consumer leads, web traffic, sales enhancing technologies, and automotive space. Long story short, uh, they help car dealerships basically with their CRM. They also have a handful of websites as well. So they are playing on the digital marketing side of, I would say specifically, used cars uh, for them. So very interesting in the sense that cars right now uh, in America are really on fire. Like used car sales are on fire. You can't get the new ones without paying likely above sticker price because of the chip shortage. So that's kind of why AutoWeb's here right now is it's a cheap play on what could be, you know, at least a year long issue in America with car inventory. And one of the bull cases I like right now in the automotive sector is the fact that like some of the premium SUVs that are being held up by chip technology, your Chevrolet Tahoes and such, you literally can't buy a new one. Uh, so if you own one of those and you sell it, uh, you know, as a used car right now, you're going to get top dollar. And that's where uh, AutoWeb could come in and grab a piece of massive action. All right. So you look back here about a year ago, this one was 72 cents, peaked at 446. Now we're at 256. Uh, negative earnings of 52 cents. See what analysts have. We do have two uh, analysts for the next couple years. So we go from minus 52 cents, which is not a surprise last year with basically half the year closed. Then you're getting to minus 11 cents this year and potentially flat or near profitable for next year. On the sales side, I wish this was a little stronger, to be honest with you. Uh, you got a half a percent uh, increase projected for 2021. 
Um, I almost don't even know if that could be true, right? Unless they're incurring a loss because I see this year as a big year. So that's a question mark. Uh, next year, you're up 12%. Uh, basically going from 77 million to 86 million. All right, on the tip rank side of the coin, we have one analyst coming in fresh one month ago, uh, puts in a buy rating of $10, 290% upside. Now that's the opinion of one person, but it is sort of impressive. Uh, this is a five-star analyst in the tip rank system. Even three months ago and eight months ago, you had about a $5 target on this one. So check out uh, ticker symbol auto and dig deep and see if it's one for your watch list. All right, next stock on the board is actually trading under $1. You're at 71 cents. So I would say, you know, like significant risk involved with this one. Uh, but Tough Built Industries, ticker symbol TBLT, and Tough Built makes their own line of contractor uh, resources and tools, right? So you see uh, you got miter saw stands, uh, you have tool belts, knee pads, all these different things. That's what Tough Built builds. Uh, you also have a variety of tool boxes that are in here. And all of these products uh, are available at large retailers like, uh, like Lowe's, for example. So this is an established company with real products in real places. Now, the volatility of the stock is something to be concerned about. You look back into April, you're at about $1.40. That sank down. Uh, as the year went on, you got down to 62 cents, then it popped to $1.48, um, and now you're at 71 cents. So, you know, this one could definitely go uh, lower, but, but at least historically, the upside has been higher from here, which is why I included it on the list. You're down about 68 cents a share right now. I don't know. Okay, thank goodness we have one analyst who's put their name on this one. That person is projecting 68 cents to 17 cents uh, for the estimate, and then inching closer to profitability in 22 at six cents. When you look at sales, this is the kind of growth we're looking for, 39 million to 55 million to 72 million. That's 39% and 31%. So that's strong but it's only one analyst. Now, one of the things that I like about at least this uh, niche or category is obviously the renovation space, home building space, it's gonna be big this year. Uh, there's no question about that. So if the demand for toolboxes and the accessories that Tough Built sells, if that demand goes through the roof this year, uh, I certainly expect the money uh, in lows and such to go up, then they could have a really good year. All right, on the tip rank side, we really don't have too much except for 22 days ago, uh, Jack Vanderard came in and just listed a buy, but he didn't do a price target. So, you know, there's not a lot of other people looking at this one, uh, but just do your research and read into it. I mean, at 71 cents that it is right now, there could be opportunity. Just know, and let's look at a one month chart here, just know that this thing can drop, right? So if you're trying to get in, maybe try to double your money and get out, I don't know. Uh, whatever's best suited for you, but you do have these cliffs and these cliffs can go you know, in a positive direction. They can also drop off uh, fairly fantastically, if you will. All right, last stock here is Everspin Technologies. I've talked about this one before. $5.40, Everspin makes MRAM memory, which basically has a higher uh, heat tolerance and uh, does a couple other technical things that gives it some advantages in certain applications over competing technology like DRAM. Now the bet on MRAM, and you can go down a whole freaking rabbit hole on this thing, but the whole uh, bull case is MRAM technology being used in more industries in more applications, right? 
Uh, so it has its pros and cons. This will never completely replace uh, some of the other flash memory applications out there. But in high performance situations, they often use the example of like auto racing, um, science and medicine. Uh, there is the use case for MRAM and that use case is expanding. So I have read that material. It's uh, relatively hard to get through unless you're an electrical engineer. But of all the stocks on the list, this is probably the one that I'll at least buy something stupid like 100 shares or something and just set it off to the side and, you know, wake up in five years and see, did anything happen? But you saw uh, back on that website, they do have like a partnership with Xilinx for some things. So it's growing. I, I like the concept. Everspin really is a patent owner at this point. They do manufacture some things, but they have, you know, over 600 patents across MRAM technology. So if this thing ever does take off, these are the guys who will get rich. I look at it as like a poor man's OLED uh, stock where it's really a patent stock that makes money off more applications. So uh, I just wanna be super clear with you when I tell you that, you know, I might buy this one. Uh, it may not be for everybody because it's a long-term hold. All right, EPS of minus 45 cents. Analysis, we've got two analysts covering the next couple years, go from minus a quarter up to flat, up to positive potentially next year at 21 cents. Then on sales, you go from 42 million to 45 million to 53 million. So just a baby of a company, um, but you do sort of have that double digit growth potential in there. And this is one like, hey, if the technology takes off, these things could go up infinitely in the future. So you could go from $53 million projected in 2022 to all of a sudden like $100 million, uh, just because an application gets approved. But that's the kind of game you're playing is, is the waiting game for the bigger announcement to be made. All right, on the tip rank side, not a lot for MRAM. Two months ago, you got a buy at $10, which is up 86%, I guess, from today. Then four months ago, you had a buy at $8, which is plus 49%. All right, guys, so that's a list of stocks under $10 for you to explore Hope you find this helpful. Again, with all these names, you're looking at some volatility, certainly. But I do believe each of these companies has their own case for a long-term hold. Just depends what kind of investor you are, what types of categories you like to invest in. Uh, but when I looked at them all, I said, you know, I think that there's opportunity uh, for all these companies to still be around in three years and potentially performing better. So that's how I came to my conclusion on who made this list. Um, as one bonus to throw out there that keeps like ebbing and flowing between $10 and under, and that would be Smile Direct. That's a stock I already own. Um, I would consider adding more, but right now I'm sort of happy with my position. I think Smile Direct could surprise some people uh, it's taking longer than expected on my end, but on the same token, I think that they have uh, the growth and the EPS trajectory that I'm looking for, so I'm sticking with them. All right, guys, let me know what you thought about these stocks under $10. Uh, give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. We'll see you on the next video.